Okay, we're coming up to the uh, finish line on our first layer on this uh, coil. You can see I just have a couple uh, more turns to do here. And then I'll show you what I do to keep the wire from unraveling. You have to slow down a little bit on the last few turns and make sure that everything is nice and tight, lining up correctly. You don't want your wires to cross over each other ever. Okay, you can see we're coming up here right into the edge of the polycarbonate plate. That's just how we want it. Okay, as soon as I get to the where the uh, wires start to really tighten up against the edge here, that's where I'll stop and we'll put down a layer of cotton. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So what I do is I use one of these um, clamps that I picked up at Lowe's a long time ago. They're just a quick grip type clamp. And I just uh, grip that on there like that to hold the, uh, the wires in place. Now at this point, it's a really, really good time to do some testing on your coil. I recommend this every um, that you do this every layer every time you put down a layer of cotton wire and what we're going to go ahead and do it here on the first layer so um, what we're going to do here is first of all we're just going to check this for any shorts you can see here that, that we don't have any should we have had a short this uh, would have beeped like that that's a good thing you want to check for that all the time I don't know if you remember the masking tape splice I spoke of earlier I actually had to unwind back to that and put new masking tape over that um, there was a small piece of copper wire sticking out and touching the uh, iron wire next to it and that's why you see the new masking tape on there so it's very important to check this as you uh, as you go along another interesting thing we can check here and see is that we've got you know over half a volt right now this thing is uh, bone dry I've not put any moisture on it whatsoever we have over half a volt on this just resting here um, we have no milliamps to speak of, but I guarantee you, uh, based on my other experiments, that if you were to just build 12 of these or so, um, you could run LEDs and stuff uh, continuously without even getting this guy wet. I'm going to go find a spray bottle. We're going to go ahead and wet this down. I believe that it's important to do that between each layer to establish a voltage in milliamps so that as you're adding layers, if you see your milliamps or voltage go off in any way, um, you can detect that and you'll have a little better idea where your trouble's at. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a small uh, spray bottle to mist this uh, coil with. I don't believe in using anything but straight uh, tap water on my coils. I want to uh, do as minimal damage to them as I can so I don't use vinegar or lemon juice or add anything like that to them. So we're going to uh, just start moistening this down here. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Remember we had, now it's up to uh, 0.870 in the voltage. You'll see that we, we're we beginning to have some milliamps. Let me uh, set this up like this so you can watch. We're up to 7 uh, milliamps as I just started to miss that one side. We'll just uh, go ahead and moisten the whole thing here. You can see the milliamps uh, rising quite quickly. That's a good thing. That's what we want to see. We're up to 13 milliamps on that first uh, on that first layer of wire. It'll probably go ahead and continue to climb on up. Let's check our voltage. We're at just above half a volt still. Uh, I saw it, it start off there. Oh, look at that. We're up to 14, almost 15 milliamps. Uh, there's enough milliamps on this uh, first layer here to do <laughs> quite a bit of stuff. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, thing about this double field coil. You can actually uh, get by with a pretty small one if you're merely trying to to produce a galvanic battery but we're going to try to do a lot more than that so now let me get the uh, stuff ready for our first layer of cotton okay one thing I just realized that we should also test and I think it's good to test this on every layer as well is the electromagnetic field so you see I've set up my compass here um, this is important you connect one end of your uh, wire you clip onto the iron wire exiting your winds and the other will touch to the copper now if we get any electromagnetic effect on this first uh, layer, it's pretty amazing, but let's watch here. I don't know if you'll be able to see through the... Uh, I can see the compass 
already starting to uh, to move. I hope that picks up in the camera. It's moving maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, but when I make contact, I do see the uh, the compass um, starting to swing there a little bit. That's really good. In fact, that's a great start to already be getting a little bit of electromagnetic field effect on our first layer. There it goes. I don't know if you can see that. But we're getting about an eighth inch of movement. As this coil gets bigger, we'll, we'll really be able to whip this uh, compass around. I just thought I'd point that out. All right, it's time to uh, put down our first layer of cotton. On this one, I'm going to use these. Uh, these are wiping claws. They're 100% uh, white cotton t-shirt material. I got them at Lowe's real cheap. Uh, the first double field coil I built, I actually just, uh, I think I tore apart one of a couple of my white t-shirts uh, to make it. But anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this um, cloth down to the width of the coil. And um, I'll probably do that off camera and I'll come back as soon as the cloth is cut to that width. Okay, I've gotten this uh, piece of cloth cut down to the uh, right width this way. Now we're going to measure it this way. I just wrap it around, take an approximate measurement. You don't want a lot of overlap. Alright, that's our first uh, first piece right there. Now I use masking tape to uh, hold on the cotton and uh, I found that that works really well. Okay, now this is kind of important, I think. You want the cotton to wrap around in the same direction as the wire that you're wrapping. So I usually uh, start with the middle here. So let's just take a small... It's amazing how small uh, pieces of masking tape you really need, and I do try to keep the masking tape pieces um, just as small as possible. But you can see we've got the middle attached. Now we'll do the two ends. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but this cotton is actually coming up really nice and tight against the polycarbonate and kind of flaring out a little. That's fine. You actually, uh, that's better than, than what could be going on. You don't want any separation at these, uh, at your end plates. You want a nice, tight, snug fit. I'm having a little trouble getting around my uh, grip here. I usually line that up a little differently, but, but we'll do it. Okay, I got a little more uh, overlap here than I normally like. To have, it's nor well. If it was any more than this amount of overlap, I would just take this uh, off completely and and start over with another. Just cut the uh, piece of cotton down a little bit. But I 